All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kotobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Near Future Launch Vehicles mod, which is being made by form user Nearty. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a number of very large rocket parts ranging from 5 meters to 7.5 meters in size, as well as some fun new engines and support parts like heavy RCS thrusters, decouplers, etc. All of which I think are a wonderful addition to the existing Near Future Technologies line of parts packs, and I gotta love Near T for continuing to develop these things. So let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what all we got. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1-2 command pod for size comparison, scroll up a bit because some of the parts are rather large, and then of course turn on our mod filter to just have our Near Future launch vehicle things and the first part we're gonna have a look at here is the E series guidance computer unit so rather than a fun new capsule we get two different uh, unmanned command pods the first being the E series which does of course have a built-in data transmitter curve net access and of course reaction wheel SAS and 120 electric charge and this well it's big 7.5 meters in size in fact and it's beautiful. Ah, uh, you gotta love all the detail into all of Near T's parts. They are simply gorgeous. Now the next one we have is the N series, a guidance computer unit, which again, same deal here. We got the data transmitter, curb net access, reaction wheel, SAS, but only a mere 80 electric charge on this one, and a scant five meters in size, rather than the 7.5. Though still, oh boy, that is that is some big parts right there, and you got to love them as well they'll make some pretty darn big rockets now the next things that we do have are of course in fuel tanks oh no from the wrong button here I've, uh, I've updated my recording software so I have all these counters right here that you guys can't see which actually is slightly detrimental to making my videos now that I look at it all right well let's look at the fuel tanks then and uh, the first one here is the EAF192 fuel tank which is um seven meters in size, does have a variety of subtypes that you can switch it between from liquid fuel and oxygen to just liquid fuel to just oxidizer, and overall is quite a beautiful tank. And this is the smaller of the three, seven meters. We of course have the uh, double size here, which is ha huh, beautiful. The EAF384, again, can switch between the three types of fuel. And finally, we have the hulking EAF768 fuel tank, which is, well, even bigger. So we got the uh, small one right here, the medium one right here, which is basically too small, and then the large one right here, which is two of the mediums hooked together. We then have an EAF96 fuel tank, which, oh, actually, I stand corrected, is the smallest of the seven meters. For some reason, I was thinking that one was five meters in size. But there we go, the smallest of them, a very large still. And then we have uh, several different adapters, which are also fuel tanks. So we have that one, which will take it from the 7.5 down to the, uh, five meter size. We have another one here that's just a bit more elongated if you want to stretch it out a little bit. And then of course, <laughs> okay, let's ditch all these. We have the five meter tanks. And okay, I guess I'll start with the smallest of this one, the NRS 6400. And there we go, nice small little tank, yeah, tank there. And then we go to its bigger brother, the NR12800, right there, basically two of those. Then up to the NR25600, bam, even bigger, and then the NR512000, all of which also can switch between the different fuel configurations that you desire. And uh, yeah, provide you with quite a bit of fuel, and that is a wonderful thing. Now, just like on the previous ones, we do have some adapters. We have a longer adapter here, a shorter adapter, which actually that one is a stockier going from the, oh boy, I'm forgetting things now, the five meter to the, oh God, what's the next step? 3.25 or whatever it is. I always forget, don't quote me on that size limit. And then we have an odd adapter, which technically, well, it's, it's a functioning adapter, but it's not a fuel tank, but it's in the fuel tank category. 
It's a very small adapter, very thin in fact, basically a paper plate of sorts. And uh, yeah, in the fuel tank category, though it holds not a single ounce of fuel. And then we have a very fun aerodynamic nose cone, which is chock full of fuel. And in a beautiful five meter size category there. So you can top off your ships with uh, a lot of fuel and still be aerodynamic always fun so there we are there are our fuel tanks let's move on to the engines here and we'll actually zoom in a bit for this one and we'll start with the r1d height liquid fuel engine now these are quite fun as all of the four of these engines do have a different variations in their mounts and this particular one goes from a standard 1.25 meter mount to a boat tail mount there which i love the look of and then just a simple compact mount. There we go. Now the engine itself, no matter which configuration you go with, does have a built-in alternator and thrust at a maximum of a thousand kilonewtons in vacuum. It does, of course, use liquid fuel at a rate of 28 per second, oxidizer at 34, gimbling at four degrees, and of course those uh, three switchable types always good. Now the next one we have is the RE4 Buzzard, which is a bit bigger of an engine at the 2.5 size category, and it has a maximum of 2,600 kilonewtons in vacuum using 72 liquid fuel per second and 88 oxidizer gimbling range again at four and a beautiful alternator. Now it's uh, different versions here are just a standard mount and a compact mount. So really just losing that little disc up at the top. There we are. The next is the S01V Eaglet liquid fuel engine, which there we go. Another 1.251 in size and again just a mount and compact one losing the ring up at the top now as for the stats on this alternator 400 maximum kilonewtons in a vacuum at 10 liquid fuel per second 12 oxidizer vectoring range of only two degrees and overall a very very nice engine there we go and finally we have the s6v osprey there we are, another beautiful 2.5 size uh, engine there, which has only a thousand kilonewtons, a max of uh, thrust. There's the word I'm looking for. Alternator uses a 25 liquid fuel per second, 31 oxidizer, and two degrees of gimbling. Overall, a beautiful engine. Now next we have in command and control, if we do zoom in up here, is a series of very large RCS thrusters. Now the first one is the AVCS integrated RCS block, which not only is an RCS block with one thruster power, but it's also a generator, which will use six liquid fuel per hour and seven roughly oxidizer per hour to create 0.75 electric charge per second. And of course also has a battery with a 10 electric charge in it. And yeah, it's just a, it's just a big old thruster with a battery on it and a electrical generating system, which is interesting. I kind of like the idea though. I kind of like it. There we are. We then have two different heavy RCS blocks. The first one has two thruster power, but uses liquid fuel and oxidizer in minuscule numbers. And the other is a standard mono propellant using 0.2 per second of that. And they are very big thrusters, almost the size of this whole capsule itself. And that's a wonderful thing. The next is a heavy RCS thruster using mono propellant with uh, four thruster power. So this thing will really get you going and it is pretty nice overall. Very cool little engine. And then finally, the RQ five by four heavy RCS block. There we are, beautiful, which also has a four thruster power and is perfect for those much larger ships. And then we move on to structural where we have four beautiful beautiful things here. Each of them are basically cluster mounts for engines, but I love these because they have different switchable subtypes. Now the first one is the EXM25 configurable cluster mount, and this one, as you can see in here, has a lot of attachment points. 
In fact, 25 attachment points designed for 1.25 meter engines. Now, if we switch this, it'll have seven attachment points for 2.5 meter engines. There we go, though that actually looks more, yeah, no, yeah, that's seven, that's seven. I can count clearly, lovely. And yes, overall, very cool mount. I do enjoy, it kind of flares out a little bit there and has the ability to hold a crap load of power. Now the next is the EXM9, and this one is my personal favorite part of this entire pack. I don't know why, but I love this overall mount. Hold on, there we go, now that we have it attached. First off, gorgeous looking. Look at the detailing on this thing, especially in these uh, bits here for the engines to go into. And overall, it, uh, yes, if we grab that, you can see we have three attachment points for small engines and three attachment points for a larger engines. We can then uh, switch it up a bit. We have two different things to switch here. So we have the upper mount to go from three 2.5 meter engines to six 1.25 meter size engines or none whatsoever. And we can also change the lower layer from three 1.25 meter engines, these three little circles there, to one 2.5 meter engine, or of course, none. Which if you go none on both, that might be a very useless part, but it still looks awesome. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. My favorite part. I, I really like that thing. All right, next one is the NRM4, another very cool configurable mount. Now we can have two 1.25 meter engines or three, four, six, or one, just giant 2.5. Though the six actually looks kind of cool. I like the sort of bulbousness of these mounts. Very awesome part, very fun to have. And the final one is the NRM6, which is another sort of flared out design one there. And it will go between, we have that, uh, which will be the four 2.5 meter engines or three 2.5 meter engines with their attachment points being right there, triangular. Or then we have the two 2.5 meter, just one on either side. This one I actually think is a little bit boring and not as, not as interesting as the others, but still a useful part nonetheless for anyone building anything interesting. Now next we have is coupling where we do have a very large uh, Clampotron in the five meter size category. We then have a TR500 stack decoupler, again, five meters, and then a 7.5 meter stack decoupler right there. And finally, a radial decoupler, which is gigantic. Look at that thing. And also very nicely detailed. I love the sort of cabling going into it all, the three very industrial looking attachment points. Very, very fun. And the last set of parts we have is here in payload. If we just pop these off here, where we have a payload fairing for the 7.5 meter size variety. So you can make some very, very large fairings there. Beautiful. And then of course we have it in the five meter size variety as well. Just again, whichever size you want, you're good to go. And that is it for the parts in near future launch vehicles. A very fun little pack that I've been really enjoying my time with. Now, just a couple of minutes before this episode, I put together a very quick near future launch vehicle ship here, which I honestly have no idea if it will take off because I kind of use the lower power engines down here, but I just love the look of these things. They're just so big and ginormous. I mean, I know that this is also a 2.5 meter size engine, but it's just, I don't know. I, just, I, I like the look of these. I like the look of these, though this one is clearly more powerful. In fact, it's, uh, yeah, 2,600 kilonewtons versus 1,000 kilonewtons in uh, vacuum. Yeah, I don't know if this thing's gonna take off, but oh well, the second stage should be fine to take off. So let's, let's go and have a test with that. Let's have a little launch and take a look at how these parts fare. And I gotta say, I really do love these things, and oh boy, it's a giant bullet-shaped rocket ship that is just gigantic and gorgeous. And let's get a good look at that thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, 7.5 meters down here, tapering up to the two point, or the uh, five meter size up here. 
And yeah, that's uh, that's pretty nice. So let's see if this thing will actually take off. I sincerely doubt it will, considering the engine I chose, but oh well, oh, what are you gonna do? So let us throttle all the way up, turn on our RCS as well for the hell of it, and fire! Oh yeah, oh yeah, that um, <laughs> that's not gonna take off. Well, let's just decouple really quick and ignite the other engines and hopefully we'll take off. So, there we go. Oh, no, oh, I lost two engines. I lost two engines, I think, I think. Or wait, no, I don't have engines at the bottom. I went with the non-engine lower section. So there we are. I did actually survive, though the rest of it is exploding on the launch pad currently. But we have a beautiful ship with glorious heavy RCS thrusters. Isn't it lovely? Yes, beautiful. I love this nose cone, and it's full of a crap load of fuel, and these engines we got going right now are quite powerful, so it'll actually make it quite a ways into space, I think, before we actually run out of fuel, which is a beautiful thing. In fact, we're only just past the halfway mark, and I'm catching on fire. Of course we are. Of course well, we are going over a thousand meters per second. Beautiful. Beautiful. I should probably throttle down, but you know what? I kind of want to see how how this survives, or if it does. Nope, it didn't, and we've blown up. Oh, our engine survived. Our beautiful engine survived. <laughs> My favorite part of the whole ship, it actually lives. And so does the guidance computer. So technically we're still a ship. We just have no fuel. No fuel whatsoever. <laughs> well, I guess a giant nose cone full of fuel can't survive going over a thousand meters per second. Oh well, what are you gonna do? But yeah, that is the Near Future Technologies, a Near Future Launch Vehicles Pack. And uh, yeah, it is an awesome set of parts, very befitting for the overall Near Future Technologies line. And with the size of these things, it's really gonna help put up some of those more awkward parts that do exist in the other kits. So yeah, definitely go and check it out if you'd like to. You can take a look at the link in the description as always. And I definitely suggest to go and have fun with it because it is a beautiful, beautiful set of parts. And wow, we went up to 250 thousand meters nice nice but yeah that is going to be it for today i hope you all have enjoyed and of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful parts pack or mod or whatever we do but until then thank you for watching my friends and as always have a good one i'm just gonna spin this thing out of control for some strange reason later folks